morning, boys and girls. It's good to be back with you this morning. Um, I'm excited for what God has for us today. I tell you, this has been a good week, so I'm just excited about what we, God's got this morning. And, uh, and so welcome back. And so let's just keep in mind to remember, we've got three simple rules here in Junior Church. Rule number one, no talking out. Rule number two, hands to yourself. And then rule number three is you need to pay attention, all right? Or you can pay Sarah or you can pay Isaac if you want to. But I would just pay attention. Um, and so we're going to get straight into prayer requests this morning. Um, and we've got our five prayer requests that we've been praying for each and every week. And so just remember to continue to pray for your parents. That's number one. Number two is pray for your pastor. Pray that, that God would continue to use him. Uh, prayer number three is pray for our president. I don't know if I was saying rule or prayer, but it's prayer. Prayer number three, pray for our president. Prayer number four is pray for our governor. And number five is to continue to pray for our nation. Pray that God would, would unite our nation and, and, and that our nation would turn back to God. You know, we were a nation at one time that was built on the, 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 the beliefs of God. And we've got away from that. And, you know, I know people are blinded by sin and, 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 and if you don't have the truth, but the, the reality of it is our nation's growing apart because we're growing away from God. God is the simple fix for everything, but we just don't see that as a nation right now. So pray that we would come back to God. Um, and then I actually have an extra prayer request. I was coming in this morning and was talking to Miss Vicki down in the office. And so y'all pray for Miss Vicki Cavness. Um, she was really struggling this morning, and so we want to pray for her. And uh, we're thankful for all the hard work she does around our church for us in the office up there. So y'all pray for Miss Vicki Cavness if you would this week. And if you have any prayer requests, just let us know, and uh, me and Miss Branson will be praying for them. And then our memory verse is Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day that you've given us. Lord, I want to lift up the prayer request that, that we've been going through each and every week. Lord, you know everything, exactly where we are. You know exactly what we need. You know exactly how to heal our nation. And so, Lord, I pray that you would uh, be with America. Lord, that you would turn us back to you, Lord. God, I'm just so thankful to live in this country. And, Lord, I love this country. And so, Lord, I pray that you would be with our country and heal our land. Lord, I thank Miss Cabinets this morning. I pray for her. I pray that you would be with her and you would help her and encourage her, Lord, and give her the strength that she needs, Lord, where she's hurting. And Lord, we thank you for everything you've done for us, Lord. I'm just so thankful for what you've done for me in my life. For it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, before they come up and sing, remember, we've got birthdays for the month of August. So if you have a birthday in the month of August, please have your parents notify us or type it in the notes there so everybody will know so we can wish you a happy birthday. I'll give you a, I'll give you a, few, a few spoilers here. Miss Branson has a birthday in the month of August. So when you see Miss Branson, it's actually, I believe, on a Sunday this year. So when you see Miss Branson, it's August the 9th. You tell her happy birthday. Sarah has a birthday, so she's actually going to be singing happy birthday to herself. So wish Sarah a happy birthday. And then whoever else, I know there's other ones, but I was just wanted to highlight those two. So I'm going to have them come forward.
reflections that I see make me wonder why he never gave up on me. He loves me as I am and he helps me when I pray. Remember he's the potter, I'm the clay. The next song we're going to sing is Isaiah 40:31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord, how to wait. Next song we're going to be singing is God's Love Never Fails. And don't forget at the end, boys and girls, that the boys are going to say God's love and the girls will say Never Fails. Just turn around.
before we sing the last song, I just wanted to share what I'm thankful for. I know that this whole mess with the coronavirus and the quarantine and everything has been difficult, but I'm just so thankful that the Lord has given us opportunities to get his word out to those who maybe haven't heard it before and to those who are missing being in church. And I'm just thankful that we're able to be back in one building on Sundays and Wednesdays now. And the next song we're going to sing is The Army of the Lord. Left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left. We are marching in the army, the army of the Lord. God has given us his armor and given us his sword. It's a life of high adventure and challenge every day. Self-control, that's our goal, marching for. y'all for that lovely singing good job um appreciate all that singing y'all thank you i think isaac was just falling out with so much joy here <clears throat> in case you couldn't see it he almost tripped there when he went off the camera but anyway thank you isaac i appreciate it thank you sarah i thought you was going to say happy birthday to me when you sang that but that's okay that was a good job i'm excited this morning you know, today we're going to talk about being thankful and what thankful really means. And, um, you know, what does it mean to be thankful? See, so many times we wait until it's Thanksgiving and then we reflect on being thankful and we, and we talk about being thankful and what we're thankful for and we say, hey, when you have your Thanksgiving dinner, tell everybody what you're thankful for. And that's all, we should do that. I mean, Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays, and uh, it's a time to reflect on being thankful, and I love Thanksgiving. I, I almost hate that, that, that all the shopping and everything that has to do with, with, with Black Friday and, and getting ready for Christmas and all the uh, commercialism of that, I, I hate that it encroaches in on Thanksgiving. Matter of fact, it's almost like they would just want to do away with Thanksgiving. If they could just do away with Thanksgiving, that, that'd be fine with this world. Because the world doesn't want us to take time to tell God that we're thankful. And so, what does it mean to be thankful? And why should we be thankful? Well, first of all, in Psalms 100, it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord he, is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So the first part of that is talking about singing, making a joyful noise. That's what we just did this morning, right? Hopefully you sang along and made a joyful noise. You know that the Lord is your God, right? But then it says in verse 4, Enter into his, ga into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Boys and girls, I'm here to tell you this morning, we need to be thankful. We live in a society in a time where I see, you know, adults, but I see children that are just not thankful. 
I see children that are that are li- being raised to not be thankful for things, to not be respectful to things. And boys and girls, you know, I hope that's not you this morning. I hope you're not one of those kids that just when someone, when your parents finally get you that toy you want, well, you're not thankful for it. Well, it don't work right. It's broke. It doesn't do what I wanted it to do. It's not as cool as it looked on the commercial and those types of things. Boys and girls, that's very dangerous not to be thankful. We should, we should spend time in prayer being thankful. You know, there's two things that's really helped me and my family through this, through this time. You know, back in March when, when we just weren't going anywhere, we didn't have church, we didn't have, you know, we had preaching online, but we didn't have the, the, the togetherness like we do now and like we're used to. We really had to lean on the Word of God and we really had to lean on prayer. And it got me to thinking about how thankful I am for what I have. And when I sit there and I, and, and I reflect on how good God is to me, and I start thanking God for what he's done for me, I don't really have as big a problems that I think I do. That's the problem in society today. People think that we have a lot of major problems, and we do have some concerns and some things, but they just have forgotten what they, what, what's been done for them. And if you start listing the things that you're thankful for, guess what? You'll start to realize that list is a lot bigger than the list of the things you're not thankful for. And so I've been finding myself praying. The other other night at our family devotion and prayer time, I was praying. And I just found myself just thanking the Lord for my family, for my home, for my job, and for the way he's brought us through things. And I just started, I mean, I just, I don't know how long we prayed, but I, for a long time there, I just prayed, and I was just thanking God. Boys and girls, God's been good to us. And we ought to thank him for it. And we ought to be thankful for it. So I'm going to give you a couple things to help you remember. So if you see the word thankful there, we're going to go through each letter of the word thankful. And so first is T, thankful for truth. You should be thankful for truth. In John 8, verse 32, it says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Boys and girls, you should be thankful for the truth of God's Word. Because if it wasn't for the truth of God's Word, we would be lost. If you didn't know truth, you would be lost. You'd be separate from God. You wouldn't have the Holy Spirit living in you. You wouldn't have the Holy Spirit guiding you. You wouldn't have the Holy Spirit walking you through life. You should be thankful for truth. There's a lot of people that haven't received truth yet. Or they've, or they've heard it, but they've denied it. And boys and girls, I am thankful beyond measure. I'm thankful for truth. If it wasn't for truth, my life would not be the life it is. Not because of me, but because of God. And I can remember my life before truth. Before I, before, I, before I realized truth. And I still had a good life. But I'm telling you, we, I was living below my means. Boys and girls, you should be thankful for truth. I'm thankful for truth because as the world and the devil always try to, to, to tell us that God's word's not true, every time I turn around, I see that it is true because of what's this or that or what's happening. And so, boys and girls, be thankful for truth because it says and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free boys and girls if you're not saved mom and dads if you're not saved you've not been set free yet and so you need to be thankful for the truth of God's word that's number one now we'll go to the H heaven 1 Corinthians 2 9 says but as it is written I have not seen nor ear heard Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Boys and girls, I'm thankful for heaven. Now, I don't know if you're like this, but this is how I am. Back when I was in school, if when I knew that it was going to be Christmas break coming up, or when I knew we had a field trip the next day, or in the summertime when I knew we were getting ready to go on vacation, the closer I got to that, the more excited I got. I mean, I couldn't sleep sometimes. I'd, I'd be up and I couldn't go to bed. I was so excited for the next day. You know, tomorrow's Christmas. 
I was so excited to get out to the Christmas tree and open presents, or I was so excited to, uh, to go on that field trip, or I was so excited that we're heading out on this big family vacation, and I'm still like that. Even today, I'll get like that. And I can't sleep because I'm excited. And I'm thankful for those things. But boys and girls, every day I live, I'm getting closer to heaven. And I'm thankful for heaven. And I'm finding out more and more and more that, I, that I'm so excited about heaven that, that I, 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 I just can't, I can't calm down. I can't get rest I'm, because of excitement. It's not because of worry and fear. I can't sleep because I'm just so excited about heaven. Jesus says that he's gone to prepare a place for us. Himself. I, I mean, I look at what he made us here in seven days. He made this. He made this world and how beautiful this is. And it took him seven days and really, really just six because he rested on the seventh. So in six literal days, he's built everything we see around us. We sang about it, the moon, the stars. I mean... He did all that in seven days. Boys and girls, he's been gone for almost 2,000 years preparing this place. If he can make what he made in, in seven days that we have here, what do you think the place looks like that he's been working on for 2,000 years? I'm thankful for heaven. I'm excited for heaven. It makes the hair on my head stand up. I can feel, ch I, I have the chill bumps, goose bumps, whatever you call them. I can feel them on my arms right now just thinking about it. Well, God, I'm thankful for heaven. Thank you, Lord. Because when, that, when, this, when, when my life gets weary, when, when the pathways seem weary and, and I feel like th there's burdens that are too heavy, you know one of the first things I think of? I think of heaven. When trials come my way, maybe one of my family members gets sick or something like that, the first thing I think of is heaven. I think, man, there's not going to be any sickness in heaven. And I get excited about it. And that... Being thankful for heaven will help you get through this life. All right, let's go on to the next one. A, the armor of God. Look in Ephesians 6, 11. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I'm thankful for the armor of God because I know that the devil and that his demons are an enemy of God. We talked about that several weeks back. And so I'm thankful for the armor of God that I've got something that can protect me during the attacks of the enemy. Let me just go through and read some of this to you. Back in verse 11 it says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weaknesses in high place. You thought what that's talking about? That's talking about the devil and his demons. We are in a daily battle with these things. And that would be sad if the Bible verse in Ephesians, they just stopped right there. Well, you're wrestling against the powers, the rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And if Ephesians 6 just stopped right there, boy, that would be pretty gloom and doom, wouldn't it? Well, good luck with that. Good luck with that. Good luck with the, the ruler of darkness. Good luck against the powers and principalities. And good luck with all that. But boys and girls, it, the, it doesn't stop right there. Then it says, wherefore, which means because of all this that we just said, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to, to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins gird about with truth. There's that truth again. Having your, the breastplates of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Think about this. It doesn't say take your shield of faith so that you can handle some of the stuff the devil's throwing at you. Some of the best words in the Bible are the small ones. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. That makes me a little more thankful for this, uh, 
for this shield of faith. This shield of faith, if you carry that shield of faith, you can take on anything the devil has for you because of God and his armor. Think about that, boys and girls. You can withstand all the fiery darts of the devil. Boys and girls, let me keep reading. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all prayer preservance and supplication for all saints. Think about this, boys and girls. The, if it wasn't for the armor of God, we wouldn't be able to handle what the world, world throws at us. We wouldn't be able to handle what the devil throws at us. I'm, I'll go back to that shield of faith. Boys and girls, if you've got, the Bible says if you have the faith of a grain of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. This shield of faith we can withstand anything and everything the devil has to throw at us because that's what God's word says. It's not because I'm saying it. And I, it's not because I'm strong and I can handle it. I can't handle it. But when I put God's shield of faith there, boys and girls, I'm thankful for the armor of God. I think the armor of God is what gets me through my day, day to day. I'll come home and, you know, probably went through some pretty bad things, but I, may, I don't realize it because the armor of God has took it all on for me. People may look at me and say, how, do, how, do, how does that Christian deal with that? How can they go through that? How can they lose someone and, and go through that and, and, and be joyful? How can they lose that job and be joyful? How can they get sick or their loved one get sick and they be joyful? It's because they've got the armor of God. And the armor of God's taking all the punishment. Think about it if you were in the military and you had all your gear on. And you, you know, you take your helmet off and you've, and you've been hit and your head's fine, but your helmet's mad. I mean, God's just taking all that on. The armor of God. Boys and girls, I'm thankful for that. All right, let's go to the letter N. Our neighbors. Uh-oh. Woo! Are you thankful for your neighbors, your friends, the ones around you? Romans 15, 2 says, Let every one of us please his neighbors for his good to edification. Boys and girls, are you thankful not only for your physical neighbors, which is the person that lives beside you, but your neighbors, the people you come in contact with? You know, I'll tell you one thing I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for my church family. And sometimes, boys and girls, we take them for granted. Sometimes I take them for granted. But being in quarantine and sitting six feet apart and having tape between every other pew and all that sometimes boys and girls when we're when we can't when we can't give them that that handshake we can't reach out and give them that hug you know it's made me realize that i needed to be more thankful for my neighbors and i am thankful for them i'm thankful for the people that i worship with and that i fellowship with in some aspects, boys and girls, we're closer to them than we are other people. This is our family. This is our church family. And so I'm thankful for my neighbors. I'm thankful for them. I'm thankful that God put me where he put me. I'm glad he put me in this church and surrounded me around the people he surrounded me around. I've got people like um, um, Sarah and Isaac and Madeline that that can come alongside us in this ministry and help us minister to y'all. I'm thankful for people like Miss Bethany that comes in on her day and just takes time to play the piano. And Mr. Davies taking time out of the schedule. It's not easy. I mean, my, my schedule's crazy and I'm usually like, hey, can we do the video this time, this day? And he always accommodates it. I'm thankful for that. And the pastor and everything that goes in. But everybody, I'm, I'm just thankful for my neighbors. Boys and girls, we need to love our friends, not hate them. If we, as a country, were thankful for our neighbors, we wouldn't be in the shape we're in. We're supposed to love our neighbors as ourselves. Well, boys and girls, I think our nation right now doesn't love themselves too much by the way we're treating our neighbors. And so we need to be thankful. Now, letter K, kindness. 
But we all like the armor of God and all that. Now we're talking about neighbors and kindness. This is getting a little too close to home, Mr. Branson. Ephesians 4.32 says, And be ye kind one to another. That's a commandment. It doesn't say, you know, if they're kind back to you. It says, Be ye kind one to another. Tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Boys and girls, you ought to be thankful for kindness and you ought to show kindness. This is the way the old country term that I use. You ought to give someone the benefit of the doubt. Pastor, uh, preached in this in his message on Wednesday night here at church that sometimes we slip up sometimes we do wrong sometimes we get caught up in sin but people we, we ought to be kind to people and love people and look at their whole body of work their whole life I mean I, I, I pastor said this and I'll say it I probably taught something wrong I probably said something wrong sometimes my mind's sitting here thinking, going a mile a minute on what to say next, and my mouth's just a moving. And then sometimes, just like earlier, I couldn't when I was doing a prayer request, I couldn't remember if I said prayer request, prayer number one or rule number one, because it's all going up here. And sometimes this doesn't react with this, and it comes out different. But we ought to be kind one to the no another. We ought to forgive one another. We ought to be able to say, you know what? When someone asks you for forgiveness, we ought to be able to forgive them. Why don't you just have good old kindness? I tell you, our nation and our world could use a, a good heaping of kindness right now. I'm thankful for it because kindness is what can heal things. When you're kind to somebody and you're forgiving to someone, it can heal a lot of things. You ever been mad at someone before? And before time goes, you don't even know why you're mad at them anymore. You don't even know what started it. If you just take time to be kind to them, and just put that behind you and move on for the Lord. I'm just thankful for kindness. All right, now F, forgiveness. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. i tell you what, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for forgiveness when Jesus died on the cross and forgave us for our sins. And then I'm thankful that he forgives me each and every day. Because boys and girls... I know you're the same way because we're made of the same thing. We're both made of flesh. Mr. Branson, I'm going to let y'all in on a secret. you got to promise not to share this video with someone, but I'm going to let you in on a secret. Mr. Branson sins from time to time. Mr. Branson's not perfect. But the Bible gives us a way to ask for forgiveness. And God will restore us. I'm thankful for that. I need that. 1 John 1, 9 is a verse that I am thankful for. I need that verse. Sometimes I feel bad because I feel like I have to use it too much. But I'm thankful for it. It's there. And there's nothing added to it. It's not saying to uh, ask forgiveness and then do this, 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 this. It just says if you confess it, God is faithful and just to forgive it and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I am so thankful for forgiveness. Boys and girls, you should be thankful for forgiveness. Because if it wasn't for the forgiveness of sins, we'd have no hope. And then you, the ultimate sacrifice. Romans 5, 8 says, But God commended his love towards us, and while we were sinners, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Boys and girls, if you're saved this morning, you ought to be thankful for the ultimate sacrifice. Jesus died on the cross. Bear with me just one second. I want to scroll back here. One of my favorite verses in any song that we ever sing is this verse right here. God's, it's, it's God's love never fails. It says, God's love will prevail. Those sins seem strong. By God's sacrifice, that's talking about Jesus and him dying on the cross, sins, chains are gone. Boys and girls, if you're, if you're not saved, you may not realize this, but you're, you're, you're shackled by sin. Sin's got to control your life. And if you're living the life where, you know, everything, I, everything's just, you know, one minute you're up, one minute you're down, one minute you're up, oh no, this is happening, that's happening. I call that living a life on a roller coaster. 
you know, roller coaster, you go down, then you go back up. Boys and girls, you're living way below your means. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior, even though sin is strong and it seems strong and the burdens of sin is heavy on us, before, before I got saved, boys and girls, and when I realized that Jesus died for my, for my sins and, and someone presented me the gospel, I didn't get saved immediately. But guess what? I started to feel the burden of that sin and how strong it was and how much it weighed on me. But because of God's sacrifice, sin's chains are gone. I'm so thankful for that. Let me get back here to where I was at on the lesson here now. The ultimate sacrifice. I'm thankful for Jesus dying on the cross for my sins. Boys and girls, if you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, you ought to. You need to. And if he has saved you, you should be thankful. And then my last point, L is love. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm thankful for love. Now love has a couple degrees to it. I'm thankful that, you know, that, that the love that I have here with this church and the love I have with my friends, I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful for the love that my family has. I'm thankful that my son loves me. There's a lot of dads out there that their, their, their son don't love them. Their daughter don't love them. I'm thankful that Isaac and Haven love me. I'm thankful that for love, I'm thankful that my wife loves me and I love her and that we've made a bond in marriage. I'm thankful for that. And then I'm thankful for God's love. Agape. Again, that song, God's love never fails. I'm thankful for it. There's a lot of things that's failed me, boys and girls. I've failed myself. This world has failed me. The systems we live in have failed me. But there's one thing that has never failed me, and that's God's love. I'm so thankful for God's love, his mercy, his grace. I'm thankful for it. Boys and girls, if you look at all these we talked about using the word thankful, and, you, and, and, and if you're thankful and you go through this list and you, and you list it all and you're thankful for it all and you spend time in prayer thanking God, guess what, boys and girls? All of a sudden, your problems aren't going to seem big. All of, a pro all of a sudden, your trials are going to be gone. You know, let me give you an example. I'm a father, and I'm going to use Isaac and Haven as an example. If Isaac and Haven came to me all the time and all they ever said was, Dad, we need this. Dad, we want this. Dad, can we do this? Dad, 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 Dad. Guess what? That weighs on you. And after a while, you're thinking, that's enough, y'all. But think about this. What if they came to me, and they do this, but what if they came to me and said, Dad, I'm just thankful that you're my dad. Dad, I'm thankful you went to work today. Dad, I'm thankful for you reading the Bible to us tonight. Dad, I'm just so thankful for what you've done and they just list off and off and off. You know how that makes me feel as a father? How do you think it makes God feel? So the next time we pray, the next time you pray, spend some time before you get into everything you need. Just be thankful. I'll give you one example here and then we'll close. This will probably be hard to read from the screen. But it's the five finger of prayer. Most of the time when you pray, boys and girls, you probably do this or you do this. Right, and you bow your head. So when your hands are like this, you got first, you got your thumbs. And when you're praying, your thumb's closest to you. And so this is a good way to help you to remember what to pray for. When you got your hands and your head bowed and you got your thumb, the thumb is closest to you. So pray for those that are closest in your life. Pray for your family and your pastor and your church. And Mr. Branson and those that are close to you pray for them and then the next one is your pointer finger what do you use that finger for right you point at someone that's what that's used for so you got your pointer finger um, that's the one pray for the ones that point you in the right direction maybe it's a teacher maybe it's a maybe it's your pastor maybe it's Mr. Branson your Sunday school teacher whoever the ones that point you in the right direction pray for them and then next you have your, your, your index finger. Now this is the tallest finger if you look at it. It's the tallest finger on your hand. And so pray for those that have authority over you. Whether it's 
the government, or whoever. Whoever's higher than you, pray for them. Maybe it's, maybe it's your teacher at school. Maybe it's the principal at your school. Whoever has authority over you, you should pray for them. That's the title. Then you got your ring finger, right? The one we wear our wedding ring on. You know, that's our weakest finger. I, I, can, I can do a lot of things, but that, that finger, if you think about it, it's weak. It's your weakest finger. And so when you're praying and you get to that ring finger, think of those that are weak. The ones that are hurting, the ones that are in the hospital, the ones that are sick, the ones that are going through trials and, and are just weak right now. Pray for them. It'll do you some good to pray for them. And then last is your pinky. Now that's our smallest one, right? So pray for yourself. Pray for your needs. Pray for the things that you need. And above all, boys and girls, be thankful. And if you're thankful and you love the Lord and you spend time to be thankful, boys and girls, it'll do something for you. And so let's not wait till Thanksgiving comes around to be thankful. Let's be thankful this summer. Let's be thankful in August. All right? Be thankful if, hey, you know, you've been out of school for a while. I know my son, you know, goes here to Granite Christian Academy. My daughter's starting kindergarten this year at Granite Christian Academy. And they're thankful to get back to school. Some, some people aren't able to get back to school. Some, some schools aren't opening up. But they're thankful for that. Could, do you ever imagine being, I, I couldn't imagine as a kid being thankful to get back to school. But I can see where they're coming from. And so let's just close in prayer this morning. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day that you've given us. I thank you, Lord, for loving us and being so kind to us, being so great to us and so merciful, Lord. God, I thank you for the ones in my life that's there that help me, to encourage me, my friends and my family, my church family. Lord, I'm just so thankful for your love. And most of all, I'm thankful for your son, Jesus, who came and died on the cross for my sins. I'm just so thankful that he did that. And I put my faith and trust in him. And you saved me. I'm thankful for that, Lord. And I'm thankful that I get to go to a place called heaven one day. Lord, I'm excited and thankful for that. Lord, I love you. Please be with us. Be with our pastor as he preaches the service. Lord, be with us throughout the week. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. See you, boys and girls.